Alright, so we will start looking at blood vessels according to uh, the list of terms that you need to know, which can be found on your blackboard under lab notes. As you look, you'll see there are far more arteries than veins, and there are a few reasons for this. One of them is that, uh, for the most part, veins are named exactly the same as the arteries that they're sitting right beside. For instance, there's a femoral vein and a femoral artery. There's really no reason for me to ask you to identify both of them. It's basically just asking you if you can tell the difference between the colors. So we're limiting ourselves to those arteries if there's a matched vein. Um, the veins that you do need to know are either unpaired with an artery or major veins that are super important. With that, we'll start looking at them on our anatomage table and then look at some of the other models as we see uh, necessary. So let's start by looking at where our heart would sit, which obviously the heart's been removed. We see the major vessel coming off the top of the heart. This is the aorta, the sort of light pink vessel there. Uh, we separate the aorta into different segments. Coming up out of the heart is the ascending aorta. This arch is the aortic arch. And then we have the descending or thoracic aorta. The thoracic aorta then becomes the abdominal aorta when it crosses the diaphragm roughly there. Off the top here on our aortic arch, and I'm gonna, oh, sorry about that, I'm gonna remove some structures here and put them back in a moment. We see three arteries. This side is the patient's right, and this side is the patient's left. Cadaver. Sorry, they're dead. It's not a patient anymore. On the right side, brachiocephalic trunk. In the middle, left common carotid. On the far left side, left subclavian. Brachiocephalic, left common carotid, left subclavian. In that order, from right to left, off the top of the aortic arch. Now your brachiocephalic trunk here then immediately branches into a right common carotid and a right subclavian. So right subclavian here under the clavicle, which is gone, and the right common carotid, sorry about that. If I could hit it. Right common carotid coming up to the head. Now those common carotid arteries then split into an internal carotid artery, which is going to go up into the skull, and to an external carotid artery, which is then going to come out here to the face. Um, that external carotid artery comes out here, and we see the temporal bone, but on top of that is the superficial temporal artery, which is also on your list. That one's easy because it tells you where it is. It's superficial to the temporal bone right there. All right, so now let's go back. Uh, I know there are arteries of the cerebral arterial circle on your list. We will look at those on a model because it's difficult here with the anatomage table as we kind of have to stand them on his head. So let's go back to our aorta. So here we have our descending aorta. It becomes the abdominal aorta here. Branches off the abdominal aorta. These are easy. All you have to do is count. The first branch is the celiac trunk. The next one down, superior mesenteric artery. Then below the superior mesenteric artery, you'll see two of them, one on either side, that are renal arteries that would go out to the kidneys. The last branch before that abdominal aorta splits is the inferior mesenteric artery there. And then your abdominal aorta splits and goes out to the legs. Before we look at that split, let's look at our branches off this celiac trunk. From the celiac trunk, we have branches that go to the stomach, the spleen, and the liver. Now your liver is over here on the right side, so the branch that comes off over here to the right is your hepatic artery, or your common hepatic artery. The spleen is all the way over on the left side, so that big one is the splenic artery which leaves the one in the middle the 
that's going to come up to the stomach as the gastric artery. Technically the left gastric artery, but we're just going to go with gastric. So, hepatic. gastric, splenic arteries, all three of those come off that celiac trunk, the little short one below it. Now let's go back down to where we split off. So now your abdominal aorta is going to split into two common iliac arteries. The common iliac artery here is going to split into a external iliac artery and an internal iliac artery. The internal iliac artery kind of runs back toward the sacrum. The external iliac artery is going to run out and then down to the leg. And at the leg, it's going to become the femoral artery. The femoral artery is going to run down and come back behind the knee. Where it is called the popliteal artery. So popliteal, femoral, external iliac, internal iliac, all the way back to common iliac. Just to review, branches off the abdominal aorta, celiac trunk, Superior mesenteric. Renal. Inferior mesenteric. Easily the hardest one to hit. All right. So now we'll head back up here and look at branches of our subclavian artery. So subclavian means it's under the clavicle. Subclavian is going to run under the clavicle, come out here into sort of the underarm region where it is the axillary artery. Note the swelling there, axillary. So the axillary artery from the subclavian down here to the humerus, when that artery comes out and comes out along the humerus, it is now called the brachial artery. The brachial artery is going to run down here to the forearm and split off. One of the branches runs along the radius, one of them to the ulna. The one that runs along the radius is, of course, the radial artery. The one that runs along the ulna is the ulnar artery. It's difficult to see the uh, arteries in the hands, so we do have another model to look at that superficial palmar arch, which is still on your list. But for now, we're going to move to veins. So let me undo that. All right, so the major veins off the top and the bottom of the heart, the dark blue ones there, superior and inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava is the inferior vena cava all the way down until it splits. And then the naming scheme is roughly the same. So we're not worried about that. Superior vena cava up here, has two branches feeding into that. That's the brachiocephalic vein on either side. Notice there's only one brachiocephalic trunk for the artery, but there's a brachiocephalic vein on either side. Now, just like with the artery, brachiocephalic means arm and head. And so there are branches here that are going to go out to the arm and branches that go up to the head. The ones that go out to the arm are named the same. There's a subclavian vein and axillary vein, etc but the ones that go up to the head are called jugular veins. So there is the internal jugular vein and the external jugular vein. The internal jugular vein, well, more like, I believe on your list it just says jugular vein. The internal jugular vein is usually the one that's labeled. Now down here, we have the inferior vena cava, um, off the back of the superior vena cava, you see this blood vessel. This is called the azygous vein. It goes right down the dorsal thorax there. 
right beside the aorta. Like I said, the inferior.